What I want to do today is to talk about how we can be used by God. Kile ambacho tunataka kuzungumza ni jioni hii ni jinsi ambavyo tunaweza kutumikia Mungu to help the church to grow ili ukasaidie kanisa kuendelea zaidi. Do you want the church to grow? Ungelipenda kanisa lako liendelee zaidi? Do you want to bring more people to Jesus? Ungelipenda kuwaleta watu wengi kwa Kristo? Ndio. Now I want to say that whatever we do for God God is very happy. Nataka kusema chochote ambacho wakifanya kwa ajili ya Mungu Mungu anakuwa na furaha. And I want to say that you can serve God and help the church to grow. Nataka kusema kwamba waweza ukamtumikia Mungu na uwasaidie kanisa lako kukua zaidi. Many people think they're not capable of helping the church grow. Watu wengi hufikiria kwamba hawana uwezo wa kusaidia kanisa lao kukua zaidi. I want to say that you can be used by God greatly. Nataka kuambia kwamba pia wewe waweza kutumikiwa na Mungu katika njia hiyo kuu zaidi. First I want to say that all of us have to stand in front of God to be accountable for what we have done for God. Nataka ujue kwamba kila mmoja wetu utasimama mbele ya Mungu ukitoa hesabu jinsi ulivyomtumikia. Everything we do for God he will be very happy. Chochote ambacho unamfanyia Mungu, Mungu anakuwa na furaha. If you have a pure heart to bless him. Kama una moyo mweupe sawa sawa kubariki watu. In Mark chapter 9:41, katika kitabu cha Mariko sura ya sura ya tisa na naamini mtaelewa Kiswahili cha. Mariko sura ya tisa na mstari wa 41. There Jesus said, Yesu akasema Truly I tell you anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. Kwa kweli amini amini na waambieni yoyote atakayempa yoyote kikombe cha maji kwa sababu yeye ni wa upande wa Kristo hatapoteza thawabu yake. Now many people think it's hard to please God. Watu wengi hufikiria kwamba ni vigumu kumfurahisha Mungu. Many people think you have to do great things to please God. Watu wengi hufikiria kwamba inafaa wafanye mambo makubwa zaidi ndio wampendeze Mungu. But Jesus tells us that do not have that pressure you have to do great things. Basi Yesu naye anasema kwamba sio lazima ufanye jaribi kwa nguvu zaidi. Any little thing you do for God, God is very happy. Chochote kile kidogo ambacho unamfanyia Mungu, Mungu anakuwa na furaha. Even when you give a cup of cold water because someone belongs to Jesus. Hata kama unapopeana kikombe cha maji baridi maana yake yule unayempa ni wa Kristo, you will not lose the reward. Wewe hautapoteza thawabu yako. It doesn't mean we'll stop at just giving a cup of cold water. Haimaanishi kwamba basi wewe usiache kupeana kikombe baridi cha maji. But it means that if we God is so happy when we give a cup of cold water, lakini inamaanisha kwamba Mungu anafurahishwa unapopeana kikombe cha maji baridi. That means if we serve God more, God is very happy. Inamaanisha unapomtumikia Mungu kazi zaidi Mungu anakuwa na furaha. And then when God is happy you bless us in this life and in the future. Na sasa Mungu anapokuwa na furaha wewe utabarikiwa maisha yako ya saa hizi na hata maisha yanayokuja utakuwa wa baraka. So I hope that you all understand that if we have a pure heart to bless people. Kwa hivyo naamini utaelewa kwamba kama uko na moyo sawa sawa kubariki watu. If you have a pure heart to love God kama una moyo uliofunguka wa kumtumikia Mungu and care about the people around us na unawajali watu ambao wako kando yako God is very happy Mungu anayofuraha so it's easy to please God kwa hivyo ni rahisi kumpendeza Mungu when we have sin we ask God to forgive us God is very happy unapofanya dhambi unamwomba Mungu akusamehe Mungu anafurahi when we come close to God and God is very happy and he will come close to us unapomsongelea Mungu karibu bae basi Mungu atafurahi naye ata songa karibu na wewe. When we love God, God is going to lift us up to a high place. Unapompenda Mungu, Mungu atakuinua katika viwango vya juu zaidi. And then when we serve God, he remember everything we do for his name's sake. Na kama unamfanyia Mungu kazi, atakumbuka chochote kile ambacho umekitenda. If we have a pure heart to love God and bless people. Kama tuko na moyo uliofunguka kumpenda Mungu na kuwabariki watu and not to be proud of ourselves. Na sio kwamba basi uwe na kiburi, unajua kiburi? And not uwe na majivuno kwa sababu and not to show off. Na sio kwamba ni lazima uwe mtu ambaye hutaki 
kuonyesha wengine mambo mazuri and not to gain power sio kwa sababu unafanya mambo haya ili jina lako likuwe zaidi and not to gain money na haufanyi kazi katika kanisa la Mungu ili upate fedha we just have a pure heart to love God God is very happy lakini uko na moyo uliofunguka ili kwamba mtumikie Mungu na Mungu anakuwa na furaha and the bible also says in Psalm 24:1 na biblia pia inasema katika zaburi Psalm 24:1 katika Zaburi sura ya 24 na 10 makumi mawili eh ya makumi mbili makumi mbili na na nne mstari wa kwanza the earth is the lord and everything in it ya kwamba dunia yote na vilivyomo ndani ya dunia vyote ni mali ya Mungu so everything in the world belongs to the lord kwa hivyo kila chochote duniani ni cha Mungu He has the res- all the resources all the money yani Mungu anazo rasilimali zote anayo pesa yote when God is pleased with someone kama Mungu amefurahishwa na mtu he is going to bless the person yeye atabariki yule mtu aliyefurahishwa naye you find blessings coming to you all the time utapata baraka za Mungu zinakuja maishani mwako kila wakati now i grew up in a very poor family basi yeye alilelewa katika familia ambayo iko na ufukara zaidi because my father gambled a lot kwa sababu baba yake alikuwa mcheza kamari unaelewa kamari but god opened the way for me after the living jesus lakini Mungu alimfungulia njia alipomwamini Kristo. And I always told people about Jesus. Na yeye anawaambia watu kuhusu Kristo kila wakati. And God gave me the opportunity to have to study overseas to have one bachelor degree and two master degree in theology. Na Mungu akamsaidia akaenda kusomea katika bara la la Uingereza ana amehitimu katika mambo ya theology and God also taught me many things. Na Mungu pia akamfundisha mambo mengi. When I pray to him he gave me all kinds of ideas how to teach people. Anapoomba Mungu Mungu anampa basi mawazo jinsi ya kufundisha watu wengi. Because all wisdom is in God's hand. Kwa sababu hekima zote zinapatikana katika mikono ya Mungu. All spiritual gifts and all money is in God's hand. Na hata vipawa vyote vya kiroho na hata pesa vipo katika mikono za Mungu. If you love God and serve God you find blessings coming to you. Kama unampenda Mungu na umtumikie Mungu utapata baraka zikiingia maishani mwako. So I hope we all will say yes I want to serve God. Kwa hivyo natumai kwamba tutasema sote ndiyo tutaka tumpende Mungu. Not to gain any benefit. Sio kwamba unafanya hivyo ili ukapokee vitu. But to say God has given me so much. Lakini unasema kwamba Mungu amenipa zaidi. I want to respond to God's love. Basi nataka nikaitikie upendo I want to serve God with all my heart. Nataka nimtumikie Mungu kwa moyo wangu wote. Now to talk about how to help the church grow, kuzungumza kuhusu jinsi ya kusaidia kanisa kukua. There is a method God has given me it's called experience God evangelism. Ako na njia ambayo Mungu amempa inayo inayosema kwamba kuhisi uinjilisti wa Mungu. That we can help people to experience the Holy Spirit. Ya kwamba unaweza kusaidia mtu kuhisi Roho Mtakatifu. And bring them to Jesus. Na kuleta watu kwa Kristo. Let me tell you there are many videos online on YouTube. Wasili niwaambie basi, hapo na video nyingi kwenye mtandao asua sana asua sana kwenye YouTube. There are people who go out on the street and pray for people. Kuna watu wanaoenda kule kwenye barabara kule na kuombea watu. And they experience comfort or reduction of the sickness or healing and bring them to Jesus. Na wale watu walioombea wanasikia kwamba wametulizwa, wameliwazwa, magonjwa yamewaondokea. And you can do that too. Na pia wewe uweza kufanya hivyo. And today I will talk about how to do it. Na leo nitazungumza jinsi ya kufanya hivyo. Now it's just the beginning. Huu ni mwanzo tu. Your pastor has to lead you in training so that you are well equipped to do that. Msungaji wako inafaa akuelekeze katika mafundisho ili nao ukapate kufanya mambo haya zaidi. Now first I want to say we God can be experienced. Basi cha kwanza nataka kusema kwamba wewe unaweza ukamuhisi Mungu. Now please get a pen and a paper to write down these verses that tell us that we can experience God's work. Tafadhali chukua kalamu na daftari ya makitabu 
ili ukaandike chini mistari hii ya Biblia inayokusaidia itakayokusaidia kuelewa kwamba unaweza ukamuhisi Mungu. Okay. John 14:27. Yohana sura ya 14 mstari wa 27. One very common way that people experience God is peace. Yaani njia ambayo ni ya kawaida ambayo watu wamezoea kum kumuhisi Mungu ni katika kuhisi amani. There Jesus said peace I live with you my peace I give you. Ndio pale ambapo maandiko yanasema kwamba amani yangu ninawapa na amani yangu nitawaachieni. So Jesus can give us peace when we experience him. Basi Yesu anaweza tupa amani tunapomuhisi. This morning I pray for a few people and experience peace also. Usubuhi wa leo amewaombea watu na wakahisi amani. And the second thing people get can experience is in Matthew 11:28. Na njia nyingine ya pili ni katika kitabu cha Mathayo 14:24 na mstari wa 28. Come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I'll give you rest. Jehoni kwangu wale waliochokeshwa na kulemewa na mizigo mizito nami nitawapumzisha. And the work of God is that people can experience burdens go away. Unapolizama katika neno la Mungu utaweza kuona matatizo yakikuondokea. They can feel the burdens go away and they feel relaxed and, and without burdens. Watu walio katika Kristo wanaona mizigo yao ikiwekwa chini na wanasikia wameliwazwa na upendo wa Mungu. And the thing is people get experience the love of God. Na kitu kingine ambacho watu wanaweza kuhisi ni upendo wa Mungu. Romans 5:5 katika Warumi sura ya 5 na mstari wa 5. The second part is says the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Ya kwamba roho wa upendo wa Mungu umeachiliwa kwetu sisi kupitia kwa roho mtakatifu ambaye amepeanwa na Mungu. So the love of God can come to many people. Ya kwamba upendo wa Mungu utakuja kwa watu wengi. In 1998 when an evangelist from Argentina came to Hong Kong and prayed for many people and prayed for me katika mwaka wa 98 wakati mwinjilisti mmoja kutoka Argentina alipoenda kwao akamwombea in me i felt power like electricity enter me alipomwombea alisikia nikana kwamba kuna nguvu za umeme zimemwingia ndani mwake and i felt free love fill my heart na akahisi upendo mkubwa umejaza maisha yake It was so powerful I cried for a long time. Ilikuwa na nguvu zaidi na akalia kwa muda mrefu. And I said I didn't know that I can experience the love of God like that. Na akasema kwamba hakuwahi jua kwamba anaweza kuhisi upendo wa Mungu sambuli hiyo. And it changed my life totally. Na ilibadilisha maisha yake kabisa. I want to spend more time loving God. Nataka kuchukua muda mwingi nikimpenda Mungu. And then when I pray for people, na ninapowaombea watu, many people experience love, peace, joy. Watu wengi wanahisi upendo, wanahisi furaha, wanahisi amani. And I brought them to Jesus. And in our letter kwa Kristo, I have seen big men cry with tears. Nimewaona watu wakubwa wakilia kwa machozi kidondoka. Not just women, many women will cry. Sio tu akina mama peke yao, hata wazee wanalia. But it doesn't matter what they experience, lakini haijalishi ni nini ambacho wanakihisi. Whatever the experience is from God, chochote wanachokihisi kinatoka kwa Mungu. And then in I see as chapter 61 verses 1 to 3 katika kitabu cha Isaya sura ya 61 na mstari wa 3 where it says that he will come to heal the broken hearted ambapo inasema kwamba atakuja kuponya zile nyoyo zilizogondeka and then proclaim freedom for the captives na kutangaza uhuru wa waliofungwa to comfort all who mourn ili basi kuwaliwaza wale wanaolia and then to give them the oil of gladness instead of mourning na akawape moyo wa furaha isikuwe moyo wa kulia do you know anyone who is sad and you know emotionally unsteady je kuna yule ambaye unamjua yeye anaishi katika kilio tu kila wakati How many people here you know someone who is unhappy easily or have unsteady emotion can you raise your hand? Je, kwa ishara ya mkono, ni nani ashawahi kumuona mtu anayeishi maisha ambayo hayana amani, hayana furaha, anaishi katika kilio? Can you raise your hand? Unaweza ibua mkono wako kama umekwishawahi kupatana na mtu ambaye maisha yake ni maisha ya uzuni tu. Okay, can you raise your hand if you know someone like that? Unamjua mtu yote mwenye anaishi maisha kama hayo? 
Unaweza kuinua mkono wako basi kama unawashawahi kuona. Kama Kiswahili changu ndio kibaya tena. Do you understand the question? If, if you do know someone like that can you raise your hand? Mnasikia Kiswahili changu pale makini wapita. Basi swali ni hili je katika maisha yako ushawahi kuona mtu ambaye anaishi maisha ya uzuni? Kama ushawahi inua mkono wako. Raise your hand. Because there are many people like that. Aha, kuna watu wengi wanaoishi maisha kama haya. Nowadays there are many people who have emotional sickness. Kuna watu ambao wako na magonjo ya kihisia or even mental sickness. Wako hata wengine magonjo ya kiakili. Many people need uh, you know the uh, what psychiatric pills. Watu wengi wanahitaji wapate zile tembe za kumeza ili walale. Do you have that in your country here? Hapa hapa Kongo kuna watu ambao hawana usingizi, lazima wameze tembe ndio walale. Do you know someone who takes to take those skills? Je, kuna yule yote ambaye unamjua lazima amele zile tembe ndio alale? Can you raise your hand if you know someone? Kama unajua mmoja wao inua tu mkono wako tu. Okay? So let me tell you, in Hong Kong there are many people like that. Wasitini wambie, kule kwao kuna watu ambao wanaishi hivyo wengi mno. But here Jesus uh, the that, the Bible says that we can heal the broken hearted. Lakini hapa Biblia inasema kwamba tunaweza ponya zile roho zilizo ushushwa and comfort those who mourn na kuwatulize wale wanao kuwa kwenye kilio and give them the oil of gladness na kuwapa yale mafuta ya upendo. I have people who have emotional sickness and take tears to come to me. Aha, basi anao watu wengi ambao wako na magonjwa ya hisia ni lazima wameze tembe because I have many videos online. Sasa watu hawa wanamkujia kwa sababu anazo mitandao za video katika YouTube. On YouTube if you look for Pastor Yip YIP wale ambao basi wanaweza kwenda kwenye mtandao, enda kwenye mtandao na uandike Pastor Yip pasta na unaandika Y I P and then you can see many of my videos utaona video zake nyingi zaidi many are in Chinese but there are also many in English mingi zimefanywa katika lugha ya Kichina lakini kuna zingine nyingi katika lugha ya Kiingereza na Kiswahili and some are in English and Kiswahili na kuna zingine ambazo zimefanywa katika Kiswahili na Kiingereza so if you type uh, pastor Yip a uh, kiss one healing you find these videos basi unapoenda kwenye mtandao kwenye youtube unaandika pastor yip ukisha andika pastor yip unaandika unafatisha english swahili okay. and many people came to me for help watu wengi wamemjia sana kwa ajili ya msaada and i pray for them na yeye anawaombea and they feel peaceful na wanasikia kwamba wako na amani. They can sleep much better. Sasa wanaweza kulala vizuri. And then they start not to depend on the drugs. Na sasa wanaacha kutegemea madawa ndiposa wakalale. Recently there was a man who came to me who take eight pills every day. Basi hivi juzi kuna mwanaume aliyemjia ambaye alikuwa anameza zile tembe nane he has great emotional problem yani alikuwa na matatizo ya kihisia and also he could not sleep well na sasa hangeweza kulala vizuri after we pray for him na alipomwombea and help him spiritually akamsaidia kiroho he started to take two pills only alianza kumeza tu tembe mbili peke yake badala ya nane And then later he did not take any pills. Na kisha baadaye sasa hadi wa sahi hamezi tembe zozote. He became peaceful, alishakuwa na amani, and can sleep well. Na anaweza kulala vizuri. I want to tell you that we all have the promise of God. Nataka nikwambie hata wewe unalo kitu ambacho Mungu amekuahidi that we can have the power of the Holy Spirit given to us. Ya kwamba unaweza pia beba nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. If you are willing to love God, kama unamejitoa kumpenda Mungu, spend more time loving God, chukua muda mwingi kumpenda Mungu, spend more time praying, chukua muda mwingi kuomba, and enjoy God, na ukaanza kumfurahia Mungu, believing that God is loving us all the time. Unaanza kusema kwamba Mungu anakupenda kila wakati. So when we pray, we can say, ili kwamba unapokuomba unaweza kusema, God is loving me. Unasema kwamba Mungu ananipenda. God is with me. Mungu God is helping me. Mungu anisaidia. And I love the Lord.
Lord with all my heart. If we have this loving relationship all the time, you carry the power of God. You carry the power of God. And then your pastor will lead you to pray for each other here in the church. And then you can go out and pray for other people. You'll be surprised how God can use you. Okay, another passage is Psalm 16, verse 8 to 9. Basi kitabu kingine ni kitabu cha Zaburi Zaburi 16 mstari wa 8 hadi mstari wa 9. They they said that he accepts the Lord always before him. Ambacho kinasema kwamba Daudi anasema kwamba amemweka Mungu mbele zake. And then in verse 9 it says that therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices and my body will also rest secure. Manake sasa nasema kwamba moyo wangu unafuraha na ulimi wangu unafurahishwa na sasa mwili wangu pia umapumzika katika Bwana. So when David has a close relationship with God, kwa hivyo Daudi alipokuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu, he had joy all the time. Alikuwa na furaha kila wakati. And then his body will also rest secure. That means he'll feel comfort over his body. Do you want to live a joyful life? Do you want to be happy all the time? The more you pray to him, the more joy you have. And also your whole body will be in comfort. Let me tell you, every time I think of Jesus, joy will come out from me. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Every time I pray, I can sense his joy. And I can feel power over my body. And I can feel comfort over my body. And I have prayed for many people. The first time when I experienced the Holy Spirit in 1998, that I prayed for someone to get healed. Siku zile zile miaka zilizopita alipojaza Roho Mtakatifu akamwombea Mungu uponya mtu uponyaji I was not praying for healing Hakuwa na muombea huyo mtu uponyaji I was just praying for people to experience the Holy Spirit Alikuwa tu anaombea watu ili wakahisi Roho Mtakatifu And then after I finished praying I asked them, did you experience something Na sasa alipomaliza kuomba akawauliza je kuna kitu ambacho umehisi A woman jumped and said my backache is gone my backache. And then the woman jumped and said her shoulder ache went away. And after that, there are many miracles in my ministry. And one time there was one person with cancer. Na kuna siku moja mtu mmoja alikuwa na ugonjwa wa saratani ama kansa. She had breast cancer and she had pain for over a month. Basi alikuwa na ugonjwa wa saratani kwenye matiti yake. And she came a long way to come to my meetings. Na sasa alitoka mbali sana kuja kwenye mikutano zake. And then I told her to relax and open your heart to God. Na akamwambia atulie na afungue moyo wake kwa Mungu. And believe that God is loving you. Anaamini kwamba Mungu anampenda. And love the Lord your God with all your heart. Na akamwambia kwamba ukampende Mungu kwa moyo wako wote. And she was willing to cooperate. Na yeye alikuwa tayari basi kufanya hivyo. And in the process she was filled with joy. Na sasa katika vipindi vile akajaza na na furaha. And she started to laugh. Na akaanza kucheka. And then afterwards she said, my pain is gone. And then when she went back home, she had the body checked, and then the doctor said, you have no cancer. And now I tell you, I don't know what God will do. 
But I know that God will make many people feel more comfort. Lakini kila anajua ni kwamba Mungu atawafanya wengi wahisi wametulizwa. And God will also bring healing to many people. Na Mungu ataleta uponyaji kwa watu wengi. The first thing is that we really follow God. Kitu cha kwanza ni kwamba sisi basi tumfuate Mungu kwa dhati. And put God in the number one place in our lives. Na katika maisha yako ukamweke Mungu awe wa kwanza. And really treasure God. Na alafu pia tumpende Mungu zaidi. And we really like God. Ninampenda Mungu zaidi and try to pray all day long you can think of God and like God God I like you you are so wonderful so wonderful to have you God is so good I like God if you just love God all the time when you're cooking, when you're walking, unapompenda Mungu kila wakati unapokuwa kule mekoni ukipika, unapotembea kule njiani, the presence of God will be strong upon you. Uwepo wa Mungu utakuwa wa nguvu katika maisha yako. Okay, now the next thing that we can experience with God, kitu kingine ambacho tunaweza muhisi kutoka kwa Mungu, Psalm 48. Ni katika kitabu cha Zaburi sura ya 4 na mstari wa 8. There is says that I will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone O Lord make me dwell in safety. Ya kwamba nitalala chini kwa utulivu kwa sababu wewe Bwana umeniweka nikawa salama. God can make people sleep better. Ya kwamba Mungu anaweza kufanya watu walale vizuri. If you have sleeping problem, kama una matatizo ya kulala, before you go to sleep, kabla haujaenda kulala, relax, ebu ukajitulize tu, stand and love God. Wewe wakati huo anza kumpenda Mungu and think of the God, the love of God na ukaanze kufikiria juu ya upendo wa Mungu and love God with all your heart na ukampende Mungu kwa moyo wako wote you experience more peace utaanza kuhisi amani and then when you go if you pray like this for 20 or 25 minutes unapoomba kwa njia hiyo kwa kipindi cha dakika 25 and then when you get to the bed na sasa unapoenda kule kitandani you relax your whole person wewe unajiachilia pale kitandani and think of the love of god na unaanza kufikiria kuhusu upendo wa Mungu you will sleep much better utalala vizuri na shukia asubuhi imefika hata kama haujui if you wake up in the middle of night and not sleep again Unapo wakati mwingine unaweza kuamka usiku katikati ya usiku and stand up to pray again. Na usingizi ukatae kuja simama na uombe. And just learn to like God. Unaomba ukisema kwamba wewe Mungu linakujia. You don't have to say very complicated prayers. Usiombe yale maombi ambayo yamejawa na maneno mengi. You can just say God, now you can say after him. Basi murudia maombi haya nyuma yangu. So, stand up now, stand up. Haya, tusimame sasa, tusimame. You can say something like this, after him. Haya, mutarudia maombi haya nyuma yangu. God is loving me. Kusema, mungu unanipenda. Mungu unanipenda. God is with me. Mungu uko na mimi. Mungu uko na mimi. God is blessing me. Mungu unanibariki. Mungu unanibariki. God is a wonderful plan in my life. Mungu unao mpango mwema ndani ya maisha yangu. I love God. Ninakupenda Mungu. I want to follow God. Nataka kumfuata Mungu. I like God. Ninakupenda Mungu. God is wonderful. Mungu ni wa ajabu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want God. Ninakutaka Mungu. God is wonderful. Mungu ni wa ajabu. So simple prayer like this. Maombi raisi tu kama hai. Now you close your eyes for a moment. Haya funga macho yako kipindi. Close your eyes. Kila mtu funga macho yako, funga macho yako. Stand, stand. Kama umesimama, usiegemee ile mbao. Simama tu wiki imara, simama wima. Usiegemee kile kitu ulichokalia, simama tu imara. Haleluya. Na ufunge macho yako. Haleluya. Oh, haleluya. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Asante, Jesus. Asante, Jesus. Asante, Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. I love you. I love you. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Can you raise your hand? Basi, katika katika tietu kama kuna yule ambaye anahisi amani ya Bwana na upendo wa Bwana na furaha ya Bwana unaweza kunyosha mkono wako. Anyone feel more comfort, peace, relaxed? Yoyote yule labda unahisi kwamba umetulia tu, hauna hauoni kama unasukuma unafinyiliwa na chochote unaweza inua mkono wako. Okay, raise your hand high. Inua mkono wako juu basi tukuone. Kama unahisi kwamba uko na amani sasa unahisi kwamba umetulia, unahisi amani ya Bwana, unahisi furaha ya Bwana, inua mkono wako. So want to say that now look around, look at the hands. Look at the hands. Hebu angalieni mikono watu wapi watu wameinua mikono. So God can come to you like that. Mungu anaweza kuja kwako njia hiyo. And so we are going to keep your hands up high. And keep your hands up high. You know I'm going to walk with you today. God can come to you like that. Mungu anaweza kuja kwako njia hiyo. You can experience God unaweza kumuhisi Mungu whenever you pray to him. Unapomuomba. God is approachable. Mungu ni mtu unayemsongelea. We can approach God. Unaweza kumsongelea Mungu. We can come to God anytime. Unaweza kuja kwa Mungu wakati wa wote. He bless us. Atakubariki weka mkono wako chini. And we can sleep better. Na unaweza kulala vizuri. How can you feel like you can sleep now? Haha, basi katikati yetu ni nani anahisi kulala? Unahisi kwako ukipewa eh mattress, unajua mattress, ukipewa mattress utalala kabisa gondoro. You feel relaxed and you feel like you can sleep now. Unasikia kwamba uko uhuru unaweza kulala wewe okay, you can be seated now. Haya tafadhali tuketi chini sasa tukae. Okay? And then the verse is Mark chapter 16 verse 17 and 18. Kitabu kingine ni kitabu cha Marko 16 mstari wa 18 Marko sura ya 16 na mstari wa 18 Miracles will follow those who believe na ishara hizo zitawafuata wale wanaoamini In my name you cast out demons In my name you cast out Katika jina langu mtawafukuza mapepo and you speak new tongues na mtaongea katika lugha mpya and then it says that when you lay hands on the sick they will be healed na unapowekelea mikono yako kwa wagonjwa watapokea uponyaji so here it says that all Christians have the promise of miracles basi nasema kwamba kila mkristo ameaibiwa miujiza how many of you believe Christians can have miracles. Can raise your hand. Kwa itika ishara kuinua mkono wangapi wanao amini kwamba mkuriso anaweza kutenda maajabu. Ni ujiza. Wonderful. Okay, put down your hand. Very good. Every one of you raise your hand. Kila mmoja amenua mkono. Let me ask you a second question. Kwa chini waulize tena swali la pili. How many of you pray for people and then experience a miracle? Ni wangapi kati yenu washawahi kuombea watu na watu hao wakapokea mujiza kwa ishara ya mkono? How many pray for people? Yaani unaweza kumuombea mtu kama ni mgonjwa na apone. Now how come not everyone raised their hand? How come? How come? Why? Not how everyone raised their hand. Sasa mbona wakati huu kila mtu haja inua mkono? Because we just don't do it. Ni kwa sababu sisi hatufanyi hivyo. Many people believe there are miracles but they don't pray for people. Watu wengi wanaamini katika miujiza lakini hawaombi Mungu. Do you want to save people from hell? Ungelipenda kuokoa watu so they can go to heaven? 
ungelipenda kusaidia watu wajue njia ya kwenda mbinguni so more people can enjoy god and enjoy heaven ili kwamba watu wakaweze kufurahia mbinguni na kufurahia mungu do you want your friends your family members and your neighbors burn in hell forever je ungelifurahia marafiki zako jamaa zako ndugu zako wakue kwenye moto moto wa wa, wa milele they will be crying out to you ambapo watakuwa wakilia kila wakati why didn't you tell me about jesus watakuuliza mbona haukutuambia kuhusu kristo why didn't you tell me about hell and heaven mbona haukuwahi tuambia kuhusu mbingu na jehana and i'm burning for heaven and hell sasa mimi ninachomwa hapa jehana did you care je mbona haukunijali so i hope you say Yes, I want to save more people. Na mimi utasema kwamba ndio nataka kuokoa watu wengi. Okay, and then um I'm going to tell you the Bible tells us that evangelism is not just by the word of mouth. Aha, nataka kuambia Biblia inasema kwamba uinjilisti sio tu kwa neno la kinywa. Evangelism is also with miracles and the power of the Holy Spirit. Uinjilisti unafuatana na nguvu za Mungu na miujiza. In Romans chapter 15 verses 18 to 19. Katika Warumi sura ya 15 mstari wa 18 hadi 19. Warumi 15 mstari wa 18 hadi 19. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God. Sitasema neno lolote isipokuwa kile ambacho Kristo amekamilisha ndani mwangu kuanzia kuwaelekeza mataifa kwa Kristo. By what I have said and done kwa kile ambacho amekitenda na kufanya by the power of signs and miracles kwa nguvu na miujiza na ishara through the power of the spirit kupitia kwa nguvu za roho here it says that paul did not just lead people to people to jesus by word ya kwamba paulo hakuwafundisha tu watu kwa neno la mdomo peke yake but also by what he does lakini alipofundisha watu kupitia kwa vile alivyokuwa akivifanya by the power of signs and miracles kwa nguvu za ishara na miujiza through the power of the holy spirit kupitia kwa nguvu za roho mtakatifu so god's plan is that evangelism has the word of god and also have the power of the holy spirit and miracles basi mpango wa mungu ni kwamba katika uinjilisi lazima ishara na miujiza zikafanyike Now how can you do it with you know how can you pray for people? Basi unaweza kuombea watu na mtaka gani? Now right now I'm going to demonstrate I'm, I'm going to ask two persons who hunger to experience God, who hunger to a close relationship with God come out. Basi sasa hizi two persons. Nataka watu wawili ambao wamefungua moyo wao na wanaomba kwamba wangelipenda kutumikia Mungu zaidi. I'm going to demonstrate this method of evangelism. Anataka kuonyesha jinsi unavyoweza kufanya uinjilisti kupitia hii njia. So any two persons here who want to experience to a, the Holy Spirit and have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Watu wawili ambao wangelipenda kuhisi nguvu za Mungu ili wakaendelee kazi katika uinjilisti. Okay, any two persons? Kuna wawili tayari wangelipenda kufanya hiyo kazi. Nataka watu wawili ili afanye mfano tu. Now if you want to bring people to Christ the first thing you need is courage. Na kama ungelipenda kuleta watu kwa Mungu kitu ambacho ungeli cha kwanza kufanya lazima uwe mtu wa kujitoa. And now you need courage to come out first. Basi kama wewe ni mtu wa kujitoa na unasema kama unaweza kufanya kazi ya Mungu tunataka watu wawili ambao wanasema tumejitoa kufanya kazi ya Mungu wakuje hapa. Okay so any two persons watu wawili ambao wanasema sisi tumejitoa kufanya kazi ya Mungu jeu ni tafadhali. In the evangelism, katika kufanya uinjilisti, first we want to talk with the person. Kitu cha kwanza ni lazima uongee na mtu. And listen to the person, na usikilize huyo mtu naye atasema nini. And see if they have any needs. Uone kama ana mahitaji yoyote or any problem, any pain. Ama ako na uchungu wote, ako na maumivu ama matatizo yoyote. And then after we hear them and then we say Uh, you know I have similar problems or someone else has similar problems unaposikiliza jinsi atajosema pia wewe mwambie basi kuna watu ambao wako na matatizo kama haya yako and we experience the help of god in the prayer lakini tunahisi nguvu za mungu katika maombi can i pray for you now to experience the help from god ungelipenda nikuombee ili ukapate kuhisi nguvu za mungu And then if the person is willing then I will say okay I'm going to lay my hand on your shoulder. Kama basi mtu atasema kwamba wako tayari atamuuliza amwekelee mikono kwenye mabega yake. Is that okay? 
Okay. And then after prayer, I will ask them to close their eyes. Na sasa nitawaambia wafunge macho yao. To keep the eyes closed. Yaani macho yao yaendelee. And ask them if they have experienced anything. Na nikisha maliza kuomba nitawauliza waniambie kama wamehisi jambo lolote. If they have experienced the work of the Holy Spirit. Kama wamehisi kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu. I will tell them this is the work of God. Nitawaambia kwamba hii ni kazi ya Mungu. And so God has come to bless you. Na Mungu amekuja kukubariki. You want Jesus to bless your whole life and forever. Ungelipenda Yesu abariki maisha yako yote na milele yote. If they're willing, I'll tell them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Na kama wako tayari basi nitawahubiria injili ya Kristo Yesu. That Jesus died for our sins on the cross. Ya kwamba Yesu alikufa msalabani kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu. And Jesus is God coming to earth. Na Mungu amekuja kwa ajili yetu. When you trust in Jesus, unapoamini Kristo as your savior, kama mwokozi wa maisha, you can have eternal life. Wewe utakuwa na uzima wa milele. Okay, so right now I'm going to pray for you. Kwa hiyo sasa nataka kuwaombea nyinyi wawili. Think of God in front of you now. Hebu fikiria sasa Mungu ako mbele zako wakati huu. He wants to bless you. Anataka kukubariki. Now relax for one person. Na sasa ujiachilie mwili wako kabisa. You can have your arm down. Okay, and relax. Ujiachilie mwili wako kabisa. And then when we pray, we can pray simple prayer. Na unapoomba, unaomba maombi rahisi yasiyokuwa na nguvu, yasiyokuwa na maneno mengi. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. Jesus loves us very much. Yesu anatupenda zaidi. Jesus is with us all the time. Yesu ako na sisi kila wakati. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. And we can also say, we can also say na tunaweza hata kuimba Yes Jesus loves me Yes Jesus loves me oh Yes Jesus loves me the my hope tells me She felt the power of the Holy Spirit entering her. And then, what did she, what did she feel now in her heart and over her body? Na sasa katika moyo wako na mwili wako ni nini ambacho umekihisi? Nasikia mbali sana. 
she feels the peace of the Lord. Do you feel comfort over your body? Unasikia umetulizwa kabisa? Yes. Yes. Do you feel touched by the love of God? Too? Do you feel the love of God? Unasikia ni kana kwako umeguzwa na upendo wa Mungu? Yes. Can you describe the love of God that came to you? Unaweza kueleza upendo wa Mungu umekujaza unahisi namna gani? She says that she has felt the joy of the Lord and the Lord has set her free. She feels now she is free indeed. Were you under some kind of burdens before you were I pray for you? Wakati ulikuwa haujaomewa je ulikuwa unahisi ni kana kwamba una unafinyeliwa una mizigo kubeba? Yes. And then how do you feel now? Na sasa hizi unahisi yaje? She feels she is free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. If God is so real, do you want Jesus to bless your whole life? Na ungelipenda Mungu aendelee kubariki maisha yako zaidi? Yes. And how about you have you experienced so far? Umesikia ndugu yangu? Wakati nikuja hapa kwa sababu ya kujua kwa sababu ya kujua. When he came here, he was having headache. But now he is feeling the headache is no more. So this is what Jesus said. The Bible said that miracles will follow those who believe. Na hichi kicho ambacho maandiko yanasema kwamba miujiza na ishara itawafuata wale wanaoamini. Is it that one of all that had it one way? Sio ni ajabu sana nje ya Mungu ya ajabu. How about in your heart and over body if have you experienced something? Na je katika moyo wako na mwili wako kuna kitu kingine ambacho umekihisi? Ni unasikia tena ishara kubwa la mtakatifu mwingine kwa Yesu wa mapenzi. He feels that he has been filled with the joy of the Lord and he is feeling to go on outside to preach to the people to tell them that Jesus loves them. Hallelujah. Amen. So do you want both of you want to serve God? Je, ninyi wawili mngelipenda kumtumikia Mungu? Now, I'm going to lead a prayer of repentance to believe in Jesus. Suppose there are two persons I just brought to Christ and then have this prayer. So can you all stand up and pray together? Basi ningeliomba tusimame wote na anataka sasa kuwafundisha maombi ya toba. Okay, and I'll say one sentence, you'll say it, and then you say it after him. Sasa nyinyi mtarudia nyuma maombi haya ambayo anataka kuyaomba. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu that we have experienced you during the prayer ya kwamba tumekuhisi katika maombi rubia maombi haya kila mmoja ya kwamba haya maombi mtakuwa mnarudia nyuma yako sasa tuseme kwamba tumekuhisi katika maombi we have experienced peace and joy and love tumehisi furaha upendo na amani and and healing na uponyaji we thank you lord jesus tunakushukuru bwana yesu you are a real god wewe ni mungu wa kweli we are sinners sisi ni watenda dhambi we have sinned against people tumewatenda dhambi hata wengine wetu we have sinned against god mpaka tumetenda dhambi kwako ewe mungu we have hurt people's feelings sasa hata tumeumiza hisia za watu tumeumiza hisia za watu i thank you jesus for dying on the cross for me asante yesu kwa kufa msalaba kwa ajili yangu asante yesu kufa msalabani kwa ajili yangu come lord jesus to enter my heart hebu njoo yesu kaingie katika moyo wangu hebu njoo yesu kaingie katika moyo wangu to be my savior uwe mwokozi wangu uwe mwokozi wangu and forgive my sins na usamehe dhambi zangu na usamehe dhambi zangu give me eternal life na unipe uzima wa milele nipe uzima wa thank you jesus asante yesu i want to love jesus nataka kupenda yesu I want to obey Jesus. Nataka kumtii Yesu. I want to go to church. Nataka niende kanisani. Nataka niende kanisani. And follow Jesus. Na nimfuate Yesu. So I can go to heaven one day. Ili kwamba niende mbinguni siku moja. Ili kwamba niende mbinguni siku moja. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. In Jesus name we pray. Kwa Yesu Kristo tunaomba. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So do you really believe in Jesus? Je, mnaamini kwa Kristo Yesu? So 
So I hope you follow Jesus. Hallelujah. So you can go back to I am no ever going to get to okay. So this is a brief presentation of how to lead people to Christ. Your bishop will teach you more. And I want to say this, we need to take care of our sins. And our negative emotions and negative thinking. Before we pray for people. And get rid of the evil spirit. Before we pray for people. So they need to be training in the church. The first step you need to experience the Holy Spirit. So when this meeting is over, I will pray for whoever wants to come out and I'll pray for you. So when and I would also tell you how to keep the anointing of God. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God give you the motivation to serve God. May God give you the motivation to preach the gospel. May God motivate you to give your whole life to Jesus. Amen.